just trying to get in just one sec. It's really weird. I kind of set it up, but the way I set it up, I'll be right there going to run. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that was me. And Alan's here as well, correct? Alan, how are you doing? Good, thanks. All right, all right. Hey, um, you guys, is the market up today by chance? Anybody know? It was, uh, it was up like 300, I think. All right on. Well, that's, that's a, that is a good sign. Um, you know, I mean, the, the economy and the, the, um, the real economy somewhat mimics what goes on in the market as well. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, anyway, um, you guys, with this, where I would pull the information, for one thing, what we're doing is we're looking at um, Goldman Sachs was fined about a billion dollars by the SEC. Um, back in, it wasn't 2006, it was 2010. Actually, they've been fined a couple times, but you know, $1 billion is not that much when you look at how much Goldman Sachs makes, right? But let's take a more recent issue with Wells Fargo real quick. And what I would do is I'd go to Yahoo and pull up their prices, because uh, Yahoo's were pretty famous for having historical prices. Um, and using the chart. Let's do this. Let me just switch my, my gear here. Um, I'm going to try and do this real quick. Uh, let's go to a portion of the screen. Uh, let's try this. Basic. There we go. Okay. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you guys, where you want to start is you want to start right here on, uh, I guess one of the best places is, um, hey Akeem, how are you? Are you there? I think you'll get there. All right, so one of the places to start right here is um, you want to find the shares outstanding. And where you can find that is actually, what I did, I went here, I typed in WFC, okay, which is their symbol. And basically what we're looking at is the damage of reputation versus an actual fine. You know, is, is the damage um, a, a little more, um, what's the word for it, stronger? Uh, the reaction from the market is I mean, basically, if you compare the market reaction to the fine, which is which is more uh, costlier? What would you guys say? What do you guys uh, think? Market reaction. Market, right? So let's let's give it a shot. Let's let's check it out. So um, if we went to what I did was I went. One of the things that you need is you need their shares outstanding. So you go to Here's summary. You go to stats, and under stats, you're going to find their balance sheet information. By the way, beta is just how, how volatile it is in terms of in comparison with the market. But if you go down here, you guys, you're going to see shares outstanding. Okay, that's how many shares they have on the market right now and how many they've issued, okay, in total. Um, and for the most recent quarter or year, whatever it might be, okay, um, how much does that show? 4.09 billion. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So the next piece of information I'm going to need is I'm going to need to go to their stock. And it just so happens that if you look at number one, um, it says... Basically, Wells Fargo on February 2nd, 2018, um, I'm going to look for that price. And then I'm going to look for a price very, pretty shortly after, probably a week after. Because the Federal Reserve actually, you know, do you guys remember what happened to Wells Fargo? Which time? Yeah, exactly, right? Um, their board was disbanded. Right? Okay, so when we look at that, you know, that's, that's potentially damaging within the market. 
Okay, so what we want to look at is did the price drop or did it go up? What happened after that Federal Reserve action? Um, and then contrast that to Goldman Sachs. So one of the things you want to be able to calculate is uh, basically how much, if they lost anything, how much did they lose in market share and market capitalization? So market capitalization is just shares times the share price or shares outstanding times the share price. So you guys looking at back at, uh, what was that date again? It was uh, two, two what? It was two, February 2nd, right? Two, two, eight, eight. yes. Okay, so as you notice, as I kind of scroll over here, the price, the closing price right at that point was about $64.07, right? And then if I compare that to, let's say we go a week down, we're going by the day here, to two eight, okay. It's um, and let me flip the camera back over here. Uh, so let's do this. Let me uh, see if I can do this here. Um, let's do. Let me get the share, and let's do new share, and let's do different. We'll try this here. Um, so let me try to pin the video. This worked last time. And let me guess, you guys can see a little thing in the corner, right? Um, and let's see, how did I do this last time? Um, I shared the quick launch, okay. Can you guys see uh, the uh, document? Can you guys see the document camera? No. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Okay. But can, is it little or big? Little. Little. Ah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. Mine is big. I just have to click on the sign. Um, let, me, let me try this real quick. Screen, quick launch, zoom. Hold on. Oops. Bear with me here. Um, so if I did, let's try this. No, not me. Uh, let's do this. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna have to do this again. Okay, so let's uh, unpin the video. And let me flip to, all right, hold on one sec. Let me get some, I'm gonna get some help real quick. Bear with me. Uh, let's try this, um, stop the video. Start it and new share. And let's try a portion of the screen. Okay. Okay, let me get some help, you guys, real quick. So that way we can get back and get through this. Um, second camera. Uh, how about this? Screen. Uh, how about via? Okay. Um, okay, I'll be right back, you guys. Hold on one sec. Bear with me. I had it for a second and then it's just went boom. I'm not using yeah, this, I'm just using that. Yeah, so you should be able to just choose dot camera right here, right there. Go here and camera's on. So it should show it. Can you guys see that? Oh, because you're doing well, a, it a Monica, I can see it. Yeah. Uh yeah, so let's, Come on, let's yeah, see. forget that. So what you need to do is uh, push uh, control and um, uh -huh. control and tab. Control and tab. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, tab, right there. Okay. And see when I went to. I'm sorry. Alt and tab. Okay. Alt so tab. That one there. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we gotta choose. Yeah, so just push the tab once. Uh, your document camera. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I knew no, no, it was. No, no. It was uh, uh, yeah, so let's back up a minute. And so, yeah, let go of that. See, when I go to so, new share. Yeah, new share and no, but it's not I, there. It, I had it up actually one time. Um, so we're on full screen right there. So can I'm you sorry. highlight the, the thing up here? Um, if you went pause share or, no, oh, no, right there, that's it, right there. that's there it, that's it, that's it, yeah. yeah. Found it. Yeah, and it's that Averer one. So okay, we'll go so let's go back. That Averer, was it. That top one. There we okay. go. That's how you change that one. Okay, so if I wanted to, let's see, pin the video. Can you guys see the screen? Oh, so now that it's chosen, uh -huh. negative. we should be able to. Okay, do you? As you go back to the, sh well, the, the, those are the share options. Uh, right there. Um, um, so if we went, no, nah, if we just went like this. I'm surprised, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this is the, this is the web page that we're looking at. So that's going to be, go back to okay. the, the share options. No, so you're on the okay. right one. Okay. Let's make sure we're, yeah, go back to the A for video. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, back Unpin to the. Unpin this, right? The, uh, I don't Maybe. think it has to do with it being pinned. Let's go to the share options up here and see okay. what shows up. Let's see. Um, portion of screen. Basic. It should be our desk. It should go back to that. Um, let me try this. I think it's up. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Hold on, we're gonna get there. Okay. Um, let's see. Hold on. Mute speakers. Let's try it. Oh, video. I think what what Jerry did was he said uh, do the USB camera, but I'm surprised it doesn't. Uh, yeah, go ahead and unpin unpin that. Because if we get that as full screen, see, right. we should be able to share that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm surprised. Oops. Um, oh, we're getting somewhere here. Oh, no, those are just this one. Okay. Well, let me have a look. Maybe. Here, let me try not to touch anything. I was gonna. No, have that's cool. That's cool. Boom! My nose are dry. Cancel the hands. spotlight video. Look. Or, sorry guys, um, unpin video. I had it back to the, we'll just stop video. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Well, so we're doing, we're showing the desktop now. Let's turn that off for the moment. Yeah, there we go. There okay. We go. Yeah, so now we should be able to Get, let's see, share. Should go and change the video on the background there. Yeah, there you go. There we go. That should. Uh, can you guys see it now? Yes. And it, I like in big or small? Yeah, big. Big. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah, because cool. that's the one that you're on right now. All right. So the trick was to stop sending the desktop. Right. And then it will start sending and then the camera. going back. And then, yeah, yes. okay. Hey, thank you. Because so you're doing either this camera or that camera, both these cameras. Uh -huh. And when you want to show the desktop, I you got gotta, you. You got to go to desktop, share desktop. And when you stop sharing desktop, it goes back to camera, which is either set to this one or set to that one. Ah, okay. So that's the All trick right. on that. Hey, thanks so much, man. Right. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So you guys can actually see my hand. Yeah. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. You guys saw. So Okay, I'll get to the point now. So let's do this. Um, I actually went through and um, I was doing back to back. Do you guys uh, remember what the price was? Was that around 64? Let's just say it was $64.07, okay, per share. All right. 
And how many shares were outstanding? Does anybody remember? Emma? 0.09 billion. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Alan. So if we've got, let's just say, for the heck of it, all right? Um, let's say if we've got 409, zero, 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 zero. By the way, did I see Harjinder come in here? Hi, Harjinder. Hi. Hey, right on. Okay, so you guys, the share price a week later was about, gosh, what was that? I don't have it right in front of me, but it was just about, let me see if I can move this. Um, it was 60, I went to 28 and the close was 5540. Okay. Um, and if I go to low. Every time he says sorry or right on drink, that's <laughs> this dude's, uh, what do you call it? Is. Okay. So, how many people are in here? So, we got Karina. All right, right on, right on. Hey, everybody's here. Welcome, you guys. So, all right, so back here, we've got 5047. So, who's got a calculator with him tonight? Let's do this. All right, let me pull my calculator out. So you guys, how do you get market cap? I really need you guys to hop in here. Can anybody help me out? We do share, share price. Share price to time share is outstanding. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so how many shares do we have outstanding? We've got this amount, right? Can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So with that, uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get that bigger. Um, spotlight video. Hey, there we go. Okay. Um, so what's our price difference? So we've got, let's see, what is this? Uh, let me get my calculator real quick. And my jacket. And with this, okay. So we're going to need this, either this or your phone with your app on it, right? And so 6407 minus 50.47 gives us about $13.60. Is that right? 1360. Okay. Now, was that a drop, you guys? Real quick? Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys, I mean, this number is so big, right? But if you can imagine, I mean, just off, off the cuff, 13 times 4.09 billion, right? Times 4090 and 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 okay? We get about, what is that? Anybody calculate it? It's about 5.5624 to the 10th. Right. So that is actually about, let me calculate it out here, in rough figures. Okay. So that's how much money they lost in one day. Not in one day, in one week, excuse me. Okay. So whenever somebody asks you what the market cap is, just take the share price times what? The shares outstanding, okay? So you guys, where did I get the shares outstanding? Let me use a different pen here. Anybody? On Yahoo Finance? Yeah, yeah, perfect, okay? So let's go back to this. So it says, Please calculate the, the approximate loss that Wells Fargo incurred in those five 
trading days, okay, which is about a week. So you could say between two eight to two two, okay, uh, which is uh, February uh, 2018, okay. Um, and so that, what I just did, I just calculated their approximate loss in market capitalization, okay? Which is basically their value, okay? Um, so with that, we're done with that one, okay? So what are we gonna do in this? Basically what I'm looking for is about a, a anywhere between a paragraph and two paragraphs, you guys, and I give a couple links in here. Um, and one is to the Wells Fargo statement. And I give a couple, um, I believe, yeah. Um, there's two papers um, that has to do with this. But really, just in essence, you guys, it's to give you an idea of how damaging uh, market perception can be versus, let's say, a fine from a regulator, okay? So, and you can apply that at work, you know, when you think about it. So, you know, that's why companies use risk management, so to speak. All right, so that's enough of me talking. Um, let's go to number two. So in number two, if you guys, has anybody seen the real exam yet, by chance? Uh, yeah, I printed it out, but I haven't looked at it. Okay, all right. So check this out. It's not too much different, in fact, I think all I did was change the yield to maturity and coupon rate. So with this, you guys, let's check this out. Let's do this. So I'm looking at, let me just put this over. The way I would set this up is, and I wrote down some, I, I had a little time between classes, so I wrote this out. Um, you guys, the way I would set this up, and let me see if you can see that. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Oops. Um, hold on one second. What happened? Okay. So cancel. No. Wait a minute. Share screen. Yes. Okay. And I don't know why I just uh, lost it there. Let's do this. Um, I remember how to do it now. Just one sec. Okay, so go there, do a share, uh, cancel that, and start video. Okay, and we're gonna, oh, that's why. The power turned off. So I'm turning it back on real quick. Okay, so you guys, uh, with this, uh, I'm going to go through number two real quick. And number two has to do, can anybody read number two for me, please? Yo, yo. So number two, Yan Corp has a 30-year, $10,000 par value bond outstanding with a coupon rate of 4.9% paid semi-annually and 16 years to maturity. The yield to maturity on this bond is 4.4%. So A is what is the current price of the bond? Hey, thank you, Vicki, very much. Um, okay, so with this, now the power came back. Um, so what I would do is if this is a semi-annual bond, um, I would take, let me switch pins here. Um, I would take the current price. And you guys, what, what can I do this? What's a practical thing that I could do with uh, this information? I could actually use this if I was investing in bonds and apply this and look at this price of what the bond should be uh, or its intrinsic value versus what it's going for in the market and then see if it's worth investing. Um, with this, um, I'm going to put down n is equal to 16. So again, I'm kind of setting it up like the, the calculator, right? Um, except it's, is it semi-annual or quarterly? Semi. 
Okay, thank you. Do you mind actually putting your page up a little higher, please? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. So with this, what I'm going to do, and let me see if I can set it up so you guys can see that as well. Okay. So yield to maturity, uh, we've got our present value, which we're solving for, which is the value of the bond. Um, the coupon, what's our yield to maturity? Does it give us, we've got a coupon of 4.9, okay? So that means if I have, how much is the bond for? It's 10,000, right, you guys? Yeah, 10,000. Okay, thank you. So we've got 10,000 times 0 0.049, okay? And that would be my coupon amount, all right? Um, and so this would be the coupon rate is 0 0.049. And this would give me about $490 for an annual coupon. So for a semi-annual, this would be about, what is that, uh, 245? Right? Okay. And with that, uh, we are going to have, okay, what's our yield to maturity is about 4.4%, right? So you guys, when we have a semi-annual, we take the N is times two, the I is what? It's divided by two, right? So we get about 2.2%, okay? Um, and then future value, anybody? For future value? Um, the 10,000? Yeah. 10, you got it, you got it, good job. Okay. And so with this, I've got pretty much everything I need uh, to be able to solve for the value of the bond. The only thing I ask is that you guys set it up, okay, where we've got 10,000 right here. Uh, and let's say if it's, if it's really a 16, but it's, is it 16 or is it 32 periods, right? Okay, and then you just solve for the present value. All right, um, in this case, I would set this up um, all the way up to 32 periods, okay? So in this case, let me just do my math real quick. 16 times two, obviously, um, and this would be 32 periods. And how much is our payment, you guys? So this is a semi-annual period, right? So 245. 245, and I'm not going to draw the rest in, but we would go out to about 245. And we also get a payment at the very last um, period for $245. All right. So when we do this, you guys, the formula for the bonds, one more time, just going off of this, is payment times one over R minus one. It's just an annuity of payment or coupon payments, and this is one plus R to the N, okay? So in this case, you guys, what is our yield to maturity? Is it 4.4 or 4.9? 4 um, hey, Karina, how are you? Good, how about yourself? All right, thank you. Hey, you guys, so looking at this, um, can anybody recognize with this right here, okay, um, when we're doing this, all right, what I did was I did the formula, and I just figured out you guys couldn't see that, okay, so my $245 payment is going to go right here, okay, so this would be 1 over and R yield to maturity is 4.4, okay, so on this case, I would divide by two and times two, right? And times two. Uh, this again would be, this would be four, not nine. All right? And this is again, 
divided by two, right? Because we're doing semi-annual, okay? So this is, this would be our, in terms of our payment, the annuity of payments times the value that we get at maturity, right? So you guys, all I ask is that you set up a timeline and let's solve for this baby, okay? You guys, and the other thing that I ask for is current yield, which is just the annual payment over the present value. You guys can't see that, I'm just realizing that. One second, let's see. Can you guys see that? A little better? This one right here? Yeah, we can see that one. Okay, yeah. thank you. You guys, and, and ladies and gentlemen, just a, a heads up, um, our coupon rate is about 4.9%. Our yield to maturity annually is about 4.4%. And so when we have this relation, normally we're going to end up with something greater than the par value, okay, with sales that are premium, okay? So let's see if it's, if it's really the case, so to speak. Um, so let's solve for this present value. So I'm going to go to the, the handy-dandy calculator, all right? And when I look at this, What's the very first, can I solve it like this? Let's see. Let's do, how many periods we got? 32. Okay, good job. And let's see what we got. Um, our yield to maturity is 4.4%. So this would be, but our semi-annual, right? Would be 2.2, okay, all right. And our payment, what's our semi-annual payment? 245, right? Now I'd have to put a minus on that because that's something we receive if we invest in the bond. And then at the end, we get 10,000 times future value, okay? And now I'm left to compute present value. So I wonder if it, did it come out bigger than 10,000? So what do we call this when it comes out like this? If it's above the par value. Anybody? That's a premium, right? Yeah, you got to do it. Good job. Okay. So this will be our value. All right. And so my question, my next question is, is normally the current yield, we use it to kind of mark the, the, mark the bond to the market and also markets interest rate, okay? Um, so what is it yielding? Uh, what's its current yield? One of the ways we can do that is let's take 245 times two, which is about, what is that, 490, right? Divided by our present value of 10,570 should give us about, Let's see if I take this off. Um, and let's do this. Let's take 490 divided by 10 by 70. You guys, I would uh, play a video for you today, but it's a little different here. Um, all right, so we've got 4.64, okay, which is our current yield. All right, so if we held on to this bond until it actually paid off at 10,000, we would get 4.4%, okay? So I believe, um, and if you'll see in the, the practice exam, I've got the keys in there, okay? Did I miss anything? Let's see, current yield, that's it, okay? So that's, that's this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You guys, what's our next, next question? Anybody? What do we got? Number three, bond duration and volatility. Sometimes they'll call this Macaulay. Actually, I misspelled it. Macaulay, okay which is just price sensitivity of uh, the, the, how sensitive the price is to the interest rate change, okay? 
So you guys, a quick question. If interest rates go up, what's gonna happen to our bond price? Just think a wild guess. Goes down. Yeah, good job. Okay. So on this one, you guys, um, if we're gonna solve for this, I think one of the easier ways, and remember that it's really, in, in terms of duration, which pretty much like, um, how long does it take to receive the present value of the cash flows on a bond? Um, in this case, could somebody do me a huge favor and read 3A for me? Right here. Calculate the duration and volatility of Security A. The cash flows for Security A pays $100 each period for a total of four periods. The going interest rate is 12%. Awesome. Thank you, Naren. Um, that that was not her, right? Yes, you're welcome. Hey, thank you. Um, hey, okay, so you guys, without, I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to look at this. And we do have... Let me see if I got this right. Thor, how you doing? Doing good. Right on. Good to hear you, brother. Okay, 100, 100. So we've got, and actually with, with the kind of weird thing about duration is we're looking at how fast it's gonna pay off. Um, so the sooner it pays off, the shorter it is, the more valuable it is. So if we had huge cash flows up towards the front, it's like on any project, not just the bond. Um, obviously, that's a little more valuable. Um, so in this case, you guys, uh, with this problem, did they give us a, a yield to maturity or a discount rate or an interest rate? Did they see that? I am wearing my, my glasses. I can't see it. Anybody see that? 12%. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so we've got a $100 payment. Okay, we've got four periods. The rate is 12%. And lots of times what this will lead to is the ability to be able to say, okay, for 1% change in interest rate, how much is the bond price going to change? Okay, and if you hold a really large portfolio of bonds, that comes in pretty handy. Um, okay, you guys, so the present value formula says, okay, if I take this $100 divided by 1 plus 0.12 to the 1, right, that's going to give me about, um, and then we do that, right, and then we get our total present value, total present value. Okay, so if we do this, we actually could, and it's good, you need to do them individually. Um, if we did this, $100 divided by 1.12 is about $89.28. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So in with this one, We've got, what would be the exponent on this, you guys? 1.12 to the what? Second. Second, good job, okay. And this would be present value equals 100, okay, over 1.12 to the third. And our very last one here would be 100 over 1.12 to the fourth, okay? So this would be give me about, let me just calculate this real quick. Um, that would be uh, 100, let's do it this way. Uh, and you could do it this way too. If you had, and is this a future value? You got it? These are future values, right? So I'm going to receive 100 bucks in two years, 100 in three years, and 104 years. So in reality, how much is it worth today altogether of those payments? Um, to me, 
Um, and so in this case, I could figure out the next one. Oh, no, what was that? Sorry. Um, and how much do we get? Does anybody get that second one? 79.72. How much you get? 79.72. 79.72. Who was that? Is that not right? Our gender. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so and we've got, I'm going to put it over here, 89.28. Okay. And with this, what I could do, I could solve for the next one too. If I took 100, oops, I don't want to do that. If I took 100, right? Or if we just took uh, 1.12 up to the third equals, right? And let's take the inverse of that and times that times 100 gives me about 71.17. Anybody get this one? Um, David, did you get that one? 355. Okay. All right. So with this, you guys, if I total all these present values up, I would get, uh, let's see, 71, 89.28 plus 79 point, I'm gonna do it the long way, plus 71.17 plus 63.55 gives us a whopping $303.72 for total present value, okay? So that's how much this bond is worth, so to speak. But right now, we don't, I don't see any maturity amount, um, par value out at maturity, uh, because we don't know when it matures. So you guys, really the key here is now, let's do one of these. Let's take the proportion of this present value and divide this by 303.72 and find out how much that is, okay? If we did that, that would be about 89.28 divided by 303.72 gives me about 29.40%, okay? And I'm gonna cheat. Does anybody know that the proportion of the next amount? What would be this? Anybody? And it's right, you guys, you can't Point see. 26, um, 26.25. Thank you, 26.25. And really it should come out to about 100% or one, okay? Um, in this case, you guys, if we keep moving, we're going to walk through this 303.72, and that would give us about 23%, okay? And so it is reducing, right, uh, 0.43. And in this last one, we've got, let's see, what is it, uh, 20.92, okay? And now, if we take this, you guys, the one thing that I did that was a little in error um, is actually it should look like it's easier to do it this way 0 0.2940, okay, times one gives me about, okay, and I'm going to set up one, two, three, four, just like that, okay. Um, what is point? 2625, which is this, uh, times two. Does anybody know what that amount is? That would be 0 0.2940, okay, in our first year. Does anybody know what this amount is, by chance? Uh, 0 0.5252. Say it one more time. 0 0.5252. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, and then the next one we've got is 0 0.7030 and then 
three, six, nine. If you add these up, now that's taking 23.2343 times three years, right? And so really we're coming up with a numeric number for years, okay, a period of time um, that it takes to pay off the present value or arrive at the present value of these cash flows. Um, so actually it's going to be an amount that before maturity, all right? So in this case, we end up with, what's our last one? That is 0 0.83, uh, wait a minute. This would be times, times, times. So, and no, oh, I did wrong, sorry. Um, okay, so in this case, this would be 0 0.2092 times four years. And that would give us about 80, 8369. Okay, so if we add all these up, you guys, this is the first, second, third, and fourth year that's going to give us about 2.3, uh, 0.83. If anybody knows what it is, please let me know. 0 0.7030 plus 0.5252. You guys, what's an easier way to do this one? Financial calculator. Yes. Or... Um, so I would get 2.359 years. Okay. Somebody's waiting to get in. Sorry. Uh, Jessica is waiting. Hey, Jessica. Um, so 2.39, uh, 2.359 years. Okay. So this would be called what's our duration. So we would have to wait that long to receive really the present value of the cash flows. Um, usually that's shorter than the maturity, okay? And if I took this number and divided it by one plus the yield to maturity, and in this case, how much was our yield to maturity? It was at 2.359 divided by one plus 0.12, right? Wasn't our yield to maturity uh, 12 percent? Anybody? Yes. Okay, thank you. So with this, I've got divided by 1.12. Okay, gives me about 2.10 percent. Okay, so that means we've got a duration. And the, remember, the shorter it is, the more valuable it is. Um, so for every 1% that the interest rate moves, okay, in either direction, um, if this moves, this will go, let's say if this goes up, the bond price would go down by 2.1%, okay? The only thing we would need to know is the actual price of bond, okay? So, and that's how we solve for that. And actually B is it says, what's the importance of duration and volatility in investing in bonds? What do you guys think? Anybody? Could we actually predict a change in price? You guys are quiet tonight. What do you guys think? Alan? What do you guys think? Sure, why not? Got it. You got it. Okay, so it's a great predictor in, in terms of being able to see how much your bond price is going to change. And bonds are worth quite a bit. Um, you guys, number four, okay? Um, actually, number four, let me see if I can pull this up here. I started to draw it out. Um, and number four here real quick is... By the way, is anybody um, ready for the break? Or are you guys working? Working. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, remotely. Oh my gosh, that's hard. Um, well, you guys, man, when you're doing your master's, you never get a break. <laughs> um, 
Well, hopefully it'll... There I are no breaks whatsoever. Oh, right? Only work. Oh, man. I mean, even when the apocalypse happens, we'll still be working. Probably. <laughs> right? I got you on that one. I'm still um, working every day. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. There is a, a gentleman, well, it's, it's not kind of funny. There's a guy uh, that teaches here, and there's hardly anybody here at school. And so I actually found him. He was up there, and I went to his door, and it says, um, I'm online right now, um, but something about, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be back uh, during the apocalypse or something like that. I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, but anyway, all right. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've got, can somebody read this problem for me, please? Come on now. I'll read four. Thank you. Real Madrid Corporation is expected to pay the following dividends over the next four years, $6, 12, 17, and 3.25. Afterward, the company pledges to maintain a constant 5% growth rate in dividends forever. If the required return on the stock is 11%, what is the current share price? Hey, thank you. Thanks, Susan. Um, you guys, um, just a, a, another real quick question. Has anybody tried to get um, any of the essentials, like toilet paper? No. Okay. There's no toilet paper. There's no toilet paper. Seriously. I mean, it's hard to get. So it's a, it's definitely a um, a very different time. Put it that way. Um, okay. So the way the way I would do this, you guys, is one of the first things you want to do. And we're almost done. But one of the first things you want to do is actually um, we are going to look at and use what they call the Gordon Growth Model because we've got a few dividends showing up here, which are just capsules, okay? And then we get to a certain point and it starts growing at a constant rate, the dividend. So we can figure out the price real fast. Um, so one of the things that we wanna do, and I was writing this down real quick. These are different dividends, right? But what happens at, at the, after the fourth year? Afterward, the company pledges to maintain a constant, what's that growth rate? 5%. Yeah, perfect, perfect, thank you. So with this, the way I would set this up is this is gonna give you a price, which will give you the value of the company. Um, and our rate of return or required return on this for this investment is 11%. So this would be six dollars which is just d1 okay and this would be one plus point one one to the one plus uh twelve dollars okay one plus point one one to the second plus 17 so we're moving on up right one point one one to the third and is jessica out there i'm here Hey, Jessica, how are you? Good, how are you? All right. This beat's driving in, right? Yeah. Sometimes, maybe, right? It's a long drive. How long does it take to come in? On campus? Yeah. About an hour and 20 minutes. That's a drive. That's a drive. Um, okay, you guys, so the very last one is you want to definitely do your fourth dividend. So you want to do this, 3.25, okay? Um, and that is 1.11 to the fourth. Now we've got something else going on out here, okay? So we get uh, one, two, three, let me just draw this, one, two, three, four. And then in year five, or after year four, okay? What happens, we start growing dividends at a constant rate, so we've got 3.25 here, 17 here, okay, and so on. Um, after this, the next dividend will be 3.25 times what? 
Anybody? I know you guys know this. So dividend five would be equal to 3.25 times, is that a little focus? No, okay. Uh, times one. 0 0.05? Yes, you got it. Okay, perfect, thank you. So this is dividend four times 1.05. Okay, and actually what we do is we're after the fourth year or the price because we've got a constant perpetuity, so to speak, um, growing at a constant rate. So the, the formula for that is this one right here, or we could say, notice that I wrote dividend five, okay? Because all we need is one because they grow at a constant rate. And then our G right here and our G right there is equal to 0 0.05. So P4, which is one of the first things you do, it's first, this is second, um, is you calculate dividend five, okay, which is equal to, let's do that real quick. Uh, where is it? That is, so you can get the price at year four. The dividend five would be 3.25 times 1.05 equals 3.41, okay. And you divide it by our rate is 11% minus 0 0.05, which gives us about 0 0.06. So this will be divided by 0 0.06, okay? What they call this is a constant growth perpetuity, okay? I mean, just if you, if you guys were figuring, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, so how much is my price? In the fourth year, you guys, anybody? 56.87? Yeah, so, I got 56. How much again? 56.83? Okay, that's cool. So let's go, let's go with 83. So in this case, you guys, what I would do is divide this by 1.11 to the fourth, okay? So I could actually combine them right here, okay? And combine 56, 80, I'm gonna use 83, plus 3.25, which is dividend four. Okay, and this is price four. And that would give me about, See, what is that? 50, oops, I raised it. Um, 3.25 plus 56.87 gives me about $60.12, okay? And so I would actually take this and divide it by 1 plus 0.11 to the fourth, okay? Does everybody see what I did there? You guys follow? Okay, so I just combined the dividend and the price because they're both at time four, right? So when we do that, we get that, and actually what we're doing right here is you get this formula right here. I just wrote, expanded it a little bit. So this again is to the fourth. This is our P4, okay? And so P4 is equal to 56.83, okay? And what would P0 be? Now, is there a fast way to do this, you guys? Instead of doing that? Yeah, exactly. But this time it's a little different, right? So could I use the capsule? Yes. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Let's see. Six. Um, let me make sure I, I'm going to clear it out here. So CF0, if I go down through it, whoops, it's got something in there. So I hit um, second and clear. Okay. So now if I go back to CF0, I've got $6. Okay. Actually, I shouldn't do it. 
okay? I don't have an upfront cost, but I do have a cash flow. These are just cash flow, the dividend. Okay, so dividend two, or time two, dividend three, dividend four, and price four. That's the reason I combine these is because they both happen at time four, okay? So when I do that, I got 60.12, right? So my one would be $6, enter, and it would happen one time. And then, can you guys see that? Yeah, kind of, right? And then my second year payment is for receipts is $12 and that happens one time. And then my third year is anybody 17, right? It happens one time. And then how about my fourth year? Anybody? Yes, 60.08. Yes, okay, 60.08, all right? Which is very close to 60.12. Okay, so if we do that, okay, it happens one time at year four, enter, and I don't have a fifth year cash flow, okay? I do, but I've actually already kind of taken that into consideration by discounting it to the fourth period, and that's what P4 is, okay? So they call that price the variety. Um, and when we do this, now, what do I hit next? I forgot. Anybody? We don't have an upfront cost to get into this investment right here. So what's that button that we can hit? Does anybody remember what that is? Is it MPV? Yeah, good job. And our required rate of return is 11%. Enter and NPV would I compute it and that would give me a price of $67.15, of which I could use. And you guys, to be realistic, there are dividend calculators on the web that can do this for you really quick. You didn't hear that from me, okay? It's top secret. Um, and this should be the going price of whatever company this might be, okay? So this would be our present value at time zero, okay? So it asks uh, if the required uh, re re rate of return on the stock was 11%, what would be the current share price? And that's it. So there's really two parts to this, you guys. Um, let me see if you guys can see this. There's the first part is getting, excuse me, getting P4. The second part is getting the P4 and then adding that in along with the dividend in time four, and then calculating the present value of the price or the price of the share, okay? And that's how we get it, okay? Actually, if you get stuck, I did put a video link in there. All right. And do we have a fifth question, you guys? Yes. I think we do, right? Yes. We do. You guys, and just a, a heads up, I'm going to practice this a little bit. With, um, there is a video done by, um, I believe, um, I talked about a different gentleman. His name was, I can't even spell it. Um, but there is another one by the name of David Hillier. Okay. And if you just type in NPVGO, that's which is net present value of growth opportunities. Okay. This is what this is. It's just getting, it's a different way to get the price of the stock. And then you take it to the market and you say, hmm, is it undervalued or overvalued? Would I sell it or would I buy it? Okay. Um, the, the actual formula for this, before we calculate it, is if you look at the assets in place right here, it's the earnings per share over the rate. Okay. 
The one key thing to know is that any future growth opportunities, any investments coming up, you can actually take the NPV of that and then discount it. Um, so in this case, you guys, if we read this problem, um, and one thing that, you know, I'm gonna just preface this with is NPV is just equal to all the future cash flows when you take the present value of it minus any upfront cost, right? So in this case, um, we're dealing with a perpetuity of cash flows, all right? So they go on forever. Um, and if that's the case, then the present value of a perpetuity, like if you win the lottery and you get 10,000 every year for the rest of your life, this is how you would take the present value of it, okay? And you would find a similar discount rate. So with that, can somebody do me a favor? This problem looks really familiar. I've seen this somewhere. Do you guys remember this problem? You guys? Do you guys remember this problem? No. No? Okay. All right. So can somebody do me a huge favor and read this for me? Please? Anybody? Um, let's see. Thank you. MPVGO Contango Inc. expects to earn $20 million per year in perpetuity if no other investments are made. Yet the firm plans to invest in $2 million next year in, in a project that will generate an additional 360000 in every subsequent year. Contango Inc. has 10 million shares outstanding. The firm's cost of capital is 10%. What is the... Sh uh -huh per share stock value if it undertakes this project. Good job, thanks David. Hey, and uh, with this you guys, um, the really important part about this is to be able to break it down to per share, right? Um, so does this company, you could break it down like this. If they didn't have any investments in the future, okay, this would be a no growth stock, all right? And I would value it just by taking their earnings per share and dividing it by, let's say, a required rate of return that they've used previously. And they usually publish that information um, in certain areas, not all. Um, so in this case, you guys, if I took the price at time zero, and how much do they earn per year if they didn't make any other investments, 20, right? 20 million per year. So we would take that 20 million, let me just write that out real quick, 20 million. You guys, do they have um, any outstanding shares? 10 million. 10 million, perfect, thank you. So 10 million, all right. And I believe, I didn't plan this, but I believe this is the same problem we went over with the other day. Um, this turns out to be about $2 per share if there's no growth. But, I take that back, we need to divide this by, what's our rate of return, or required rate of return? The cost of capital. You guys, just a heads up, the cost of capital, which is often used, it can also be used like the discount rate. Okay, so that's really the cost of using the money in any type of investment. So this would be 10%, okay? So again, our, our R would be 10%. So this would be uh, basically $2 divided by 10%. And that would give me, if I didn't have this part, that would give me and $2. Say it one more time. Years back, I suffered a neck injury. $20 per share. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, per share. All right. So we've got this part. That's what that is. So that's $20 per share. All right. Now the next part it talks about, you guys, a quick question. 360. 
thousand in every subsequent year. Is there an end to that? That you guys see? No. No, it keeps on going, right? So the NPV is really just taking a perpetuity, okay? And taking out, just one second. Um, taking out, um, what's our upfront cost? It's two million, right? The firm plans to invest two million next year in the project, and it will generate 360,000 every year. That's not a bad deal. Um, so let's take the NPV of that. So let's do that. So if we did that, uh, this would be, you get the NPV one, okay, of time one. So I'm gonna do it at, if we get it every year, it's just the perpetuity, right? So what I'm gonna do is take that present value of the perpetuity minus any upfront cost, okay? And that would be about 360,000, okay? And what's our cost of capital, you guys? 10%, point one. You got it. Okay, good job. And we would take away our upfront cost, which is two million. Okay. And that would be our net present value for one. Okay. Um, with that, that's gonna give me about three hundred. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Three hundred and sixty divided by 0 0.10, okay, less 2 million gives us about, uh, this would be 1,600,000, okay? And to get this, now this is at time one, right? So to do this, to get this to time zero, what do we need to do? Anybody? This got it? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So this would be 1.10 to the one, okay? And this would be about, what is that? Let me take this out, two million. Uh, okay, divided by 1.10 gives us about, ooh, that's a big number. Okay, and the very last thing that we do is don't we get everything into a per share basis? Five, four, five, four, five. Okay. And then how many shares do we have up there? <laughs> 10 million. 10 million. Perfect. Thank you. So we're going to divide this by $10 million. Oh, excuse me. See how easy that is? 10 million shares. Okay. And that would give me about let's see, 10 million. Uh, it's about draw that one. Fourteen point one four five five, or otherwise known as fourteen cents and fifty five. So if we take that, that is this part right here. So that's going to be equal to point one four five five per share. Okay, and I believe the rate or the amount that we got per share on the, the assets in place, right, is $20. So what's our total price gonna be? Anybody? I know you guys got this. We just add. Okay, so $20.14 you could round it up to even 15 if you wanted. And that would give you, that's a, on a per share basis, okay? Which is actually not bad because you're often given this, like if I went to Yahoo Finance, I could find this, I could find this, okay? Because they often publish this, especially to investors. So like if you are in a, um, uh, that's what that called, uh, when the um, voting shares come together, an investors meeting, 
Um, they will discuss these, and then lots of times they will publish these in their annual report. So it's, it's not super private information. So between all this, you can actually calculate this and get a very current price of what the company price per share should be, okay? Um, so you guys, this is just another tool, so to speak, in the toolbox. Uh, in other words, in, in terms of being able to value a company. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna add anything else to that. That's a, that's a fairly sizable test. Um, what do you guys think? Should, should I add another one? No, please. No way, right? Um, you guys have been doing plenty of work. How's the how's the other classes going? Difficult. Well, okay. It's a little bit intense because I don't know how I'm gonna have four different classes online. So we'll see. That is intense. That is intense. Well, guys, if if there's anything I can do to assist, um, you know, this uh, take up to two weeks to turn this in. All right. And how do we and, turn it in, Sean? Well, say it again, Nara. How do we turn it in? Uh, just turn it in online if you could. And you know, one of the ways that I would do it is what I'll do uh, the, the easiest way, and you guys know how to do this, um, is just by taking a picture. Okay. Okay, so upload it onto Moodle or Blackboard. Um, actually, what you can do if you want to email it to me and just oh, copy okay. it, like, you know, copy and paste it on the word. Okay. Um, and um, that would save you a trip having to come over here. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So we All can right. send you like a PDF or a picture or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Is that, that, yeah. And actually, if you could put it into like a word or PDF, that would be very helpful. So in terms of correcting. Will this video be able to be viewed again? Because yes. it says it's, it's recording, so I assume you recorded the whole yeah. lecture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So will all of our lectures going forward be done like this, just video recorded, and like we can review it later and set up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Got it. And, um, you know, I, in terms of the other classes that you guys take, um, you know, since they're online, most of them usually record. So just, uh, you know, a heads up. If this is kind of a, a new environment for you, um, you know, ask him, hey, can, can we have the recording? You know, um, because you guys are paying for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, very so, true. Hey, well, listen, you guys, um, th that's it. I think that pretty much covers it. And in terms of the presentation, um, I'm actually going to do a little example one and put it up. Um, just so you guys can see how I use uh, Zoom um, in terms of online. And then, you know, whether you guys want to get together uh, and meet um, or whether you want to meet online, it's completely doable online, okay? Not to, like, uh, not to make your life any more difficult than it is already. Right. All right, that sounds good. Okay. All right, folks. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you, Thank you Thank guys. You, Bye. Try and get some rest over spring break sometime. All right? Thank Take you. Care. All right. Until we'll eventually. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Um, okay, let's see. Hey, there's David. Hey, Sean. How's it going? Hey, bud. I didn't see. I, you're, you're one of the first ones that has the video, so it's right on. Yeah, well, that's no good. Hey, have a have a good one. All right, you, have a good too. have a good break. You too. Don't don't work too hard. All right, I'll try not to. Take yeah. care. Now. You okay. too.